We're delighted to say the uh, Boris Ali man and two-time All-Ireland winner with Tipperary, Paddy Stapleton, is in studio with us this morning. Paddy, how are things? Not too bad, Shane. How are you? Keeping well. Keeping well. You've got this uh, this book, so Up in the Air, Muckfest. It's a children's book for those of you out there who want to, to get your hands on it. It's a, it's a follow-on to this. So we've got... Now, this is the first question this I'm going to ask you. This is, the, this is actually another new one. So it's a different new one, right, it's okay. A different, so <laughs> now, anyone, anyone could do one book, so <laughs> we <anyone, laughs> do two. For anyone interested, I'm going to get that in the middle of the screen. My first hurley... And my first hurl. This is a this is a controversial topic, Paddy. Yes. You've decided to go with both. Is it a hurley or a hurl? Well, it depends where you're from, doesn't it? I I could never imagine, you know, play hurl hurl with a hurl. You know, it's hurl with a hurl. So it's always hurley in Tipperary, but a lot of the places you get killed if you said it was a hurley. So I had to avoid the controversy really, um, because I was even talking to my own mother, and she said, "Well, I wouldn't buy my first hurl." So I'm sure a lot of parents in Ireland wouldn't buy my first that's, hurley. That's why you went for the two. So that's why I went for the, for the two of them. Yeah, and, and you know what? But and like obviously I'm doing all the work for it myself and and printing and publishing all that, and it isn't as cost effective. But really, what I do with the books, <laughs> I want to actually do something that people really personally yeah, want. And yeah. even the thought of my first hurley, really, it's 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 like you know everybody plays football or soccer or whatever, and your first boots or your your boots are your thing. And like Derry London Derry over here, like you know. <laughs> Not quite, as, not quite as controversial. <laughs> well, a hurley is such a personal thing to people. Like, if you play it, you know all about it. It's like if somebody picked up my hurley and, and it's there didn't as like well. His first one. My Sorry. first one's Look here. It. Yeah, there it is. Look at this, folks. The hurley. Now, in in, ter in terms of <laughs> cutest things we've ever had in the studio, that has to be the cutest thing I've ever held in my life. That is unbelievable. All the way to under fourteen. Yeah, well, look, I was never the biggest guy, so I had that for a long few years. Tip colours, Paddy, hold that for us and tell us yeah. what, like, what's the story behind this hurl? What's the story I'm behind? Sorry, I, I'm calling it a hurl because I'm. Oh, see, there you go. Yes. Yeah. I'm from Monaghan, so maybe I don't have the same right to. Well, to look, I mean, you have your own opinion. Uh, that's all. That'd be like me talking about football, I suppose. But no, this uh, my own dad was a hurley maker. Obviously, retired from it now. Um, and this was my first hurley. And for some reason, uh, my mum just decided to keep this one, even though she didn't keep my brother's hurley. So I don't know what they were showing <laughs> when they were young. But you know, and I have pictures with it. It's it's very very funny. Um, I just looked for them pictures since I wrote the book. Right. Um, and even the book, the hurley maker in it. I hadn't seen the pictures, but it resembles my dad an awful lot with yeah, the pictures yeah, that we've seen, yeah. the apron, the hair, everything like that. So um, obviously, you know, what I've seen all through my life came through with this. And luckily she held on to it and looking at it. I know the Tipperary colours might put a few off. But, uh, <laughs> but what, age, what age were you when you had this one? Oh, I'd say one, two years of age. Like there's a picture of me in Simple Stadium. Uh, it's on the website. Um, and I'm standing there with a few older fellas. My, obviously, my dad put me into it. Um, and I'm just right in front of the, the old stand holding this very same hurley. So you can see. But you, you're looking at it, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty old looking. It's a fair <laughs> relic at this stage. But I think it was a lovely, it's a lovely thing to have, like, mm. you know. But the only thing is, I was told if I lose it, I'm in serious yeah, trouble. Yeah. So we can't be leaving it here today. I was going to say, we need some cute things for our, uh, for our set here. But we wouldn't, we wouldn't dream of taking that off you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so let, we'll talk us through it. Because these books are, are, I mean, I know they're being used in schools by teachers yeah. as well. And look, parents at home can maybe use some of the, the younger ones with the, with the, the yeah. illustrations. But Up in the Air Muckfest. So this is the sequel to the Up in the, Up in the Air book released yeah. in November 2020. So it's set a few weeks. This is the kids of Glenstown. Glenstown, yeah. Uh, lost their Curdy Hurling final. And uh, Muckfest is a fa this famous festival that's been running in the town for the past 50 years. So what, what's, the, what's the general... So what, what age group is it for and what's the general story behind this? The age, the age group is probably in around your good 10-year-old, 11, 12, 13. That age. I have heard of younger kids, but um, maybe not every 9-year-old would, would be able to read it. Um, and the story is really... I couldn't write the same book again. Like, you know, I got great feedback from the first one. It's your typical, we're going to win the county final, which we all dream about. But this one, like, I just, I'd be bored writing the same thing again. I think kids would be bored, even if they don't realise it beforehand. So this is more like uh, a few weeks later, uh, like, have you ever played in, like, street leagues at home or parish league, we used to call it, where you under 14 or under 12, you're picked into your separate teams in the village. Now, we did in Boris Lee. So, like, if you talk about intensity, like, you hate losing to your friend in training. Imagine if it's an actual match so we had some see we had some rough rough times in our parish league so it's based around that idea instead of working together now it's more like civil war in Glenstown where uh, they all take on an identity and and you know the thing I really want to do is there's one more female dominated dominated team in it and that whole look at females in sport uh, gender in sport and something that I really really enjoy doing but in the middle of that like it 
I, I don't like to write just about hurling. Like, there's an awful lot about hurling in it, but uh, there's also other challenges in it during the week of Muckfest. That's the that's the interesting one of the interesting themes because like it's it's written through the character perspective of Fitzy, this main mm. character. But uh, Lizzie, the female character, you speak, we just spoke to Alex Cavanaugh, the Shelburne mm. player, and like, there, yeah. you just talk about playing with with boys teams growing up. But that's one of the themes in this book is that you're talking about Lizzie, this this mostly girls team, and trying to deal with the reception from the local community thinking yes. oh, they're not good enough they're only girls yes. so that's a that's a very interesting strand to the yeah and I wouldn't, I wouldn't claim to give it an answer but I do think it's an interesting one in light of day because I know a lot of Camogie and ladies football uh, players and their perspective is very very interesting on it and while I think the 2020 movement I think it was absolutely unbelievable and phenomenal and some people think maybe it was just a bit of a fad but I think even at yourselves at News Talk mm. doing a massive job at bringing ladies sport into the, into the fore um, that it has to be supported from everywhere. And I think even, number one, ladies themselves, the attendance at the games, um, you know, some of my friends would say there sometimes be more men at their female matches than women. Mm. So I think that's one aspect. Uh, the media themselves, obviously, are a lot more invested than they were. Um, and I think it is going to a higher platform. You know, the ladies' football final is one of the biggest female events in the world. We have our Irish soccer team now going to the World Cup. So I think it's going from strength to strength. But it's just... Um, to look at it and okay we're looking at the men's game but I, I really think it can, can go higher and higher but look I suppose we're only are we only the last 10 or 15 years where it's been taken yeah. to another level the coaching is getting better the exposure is getting better more sponsorship and I think you know the, the sky's the limit really in Ireland I know his brother as well he's a, he's a good mark in Hackney and he wants to appeal to as broad a range as possible <laughs> so like everyone in the country buys this book like you know <laughs> well that would be ideal now you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> the more the better uh, it's, it's funny that you've got the two pigs the king and queen pig mascot of the, the muck fest uh, mentioned in the, in the title but puck fair elements to this puck fair element of course puck, I was at puck fair yeah very yeah. I was wondering well, whether I could release it or not the, the pigs are locked up in this well, as the well, pigs yeah. now aren't up on a height they're, you know, they're not exposed to the, the, the hot weather but uh, yeah I, I think like if we're talking about Ireland like I, I'll say I write about Ireland there but the couple of books I've written is more about Irish kids, Irish society, and what makes it special to me, and especially in the rural setting. Like, I'm very lucky to grow up in a lovely rural setting. And um, really, Buckfest is, is, is a festival they run, but it's more like a symbol of what makes every place special and different in Ireland. And I just think we're so unique, and we're so unique to have Gaelic games, and all sports really, but Gaelic games especially, it just runs through us, and it's our medium to where we live, I find, like that. So the first thing is, how are the team going, and how did the match <laughs> go last day? And, um, and I just think it's so special every place, and definitely Puck Fair was a sort of a, a trigger, uh, a, a sort of something that I wanted to explore, and you know, I, I thought more of the pigs would be a nice little element of it, and there's a pig run at the start where the pigs are chasing them, and that's to decide who are the captains of the team or the, the head pigs as we call them so it's just my own little uh, maybe a little you know different uh, but it's the way I was thinking about it and just really enjoyed doing something a little bit you know off centre It's probably the type of book you would have wanted to read at that age yeah, I suppose. Look, the first the first book I spoke at length about my struggles when I was young, like when I was in maybe first class. I be coming home with one out of ten of my spellings and two out of ten of my spellings. So when I was young, the only thing I had, do you remember around the nineties, it was Match Magazine and oh, you know, shoot, like, shoot, shoot. I was a shoot man. Yeah, I was a Match Man. I have to say, oh, yeah, 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 I was yeah. more and shoot. Count. I'd say, yeah. Every Tuesday, a Match came out and they'd read it back to front. Yeah, yeah. And the posters all over the wall and, yeah, and all that Jesus. stuff. Yeah. The four pages and the eight page posters. So that's all nostalgia to me, but. I, back then, I can't really remember much GA stuff to read. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I think back then, the, the soccer, you know, was very attractive. It was glorified, really. And I think it's it's very nice to have other things. And I know there's some other writers at the minute who have great sports books, GA books for youngsters as well. And I think if you can, like I see in school, I'm an English teacher. We try to get um, something, a book that can broaden their horizons, you know. But I think sometimes you need a bridge, something that they're already interested, that can already relate to and then just getting them you know reading from there get their literacy improved from there and then we maybe can go on to broader topics but I like something that can already bridge it they can get their teeth into it straight away and I think sport in Ireland is one of those things totally for, for any uh, teachers or, or parents watching who want to maybe get one for a younger audience we've got this one someone in the comments as well Danny Max Tridaway it's a hurley oh. <laughs> this is cost it's going to cost go on Danny <laughs> mayhem but uh, yeah my first hurley my first hurley so maybe talk to us about this one this is, uh, this is a new one illustrated by Tom Doyle I should yes. mention as well but uh, so this was for a younger age group? Younger, yeah. I mean, look, at if reading-wise, I mean, the reading isn't overly complicated in it, so you'd probably be saying reading-wise six, seven, eight, but like I've been doing photo shoots and been giving it to my, my friend's kids now and they're 
three and four and even the pitch is quite easy it's to brilliant. look like through. Brilliant, not spoiler alert here for some <laughs> of the pages, but like you can see some great illustrations. It's it's really well done for a young I mean, kid, I think. Tom, you mentioned Tom there. Tom is yellow belly on, that's his handle, he's not a yellow belly, but he's, he's that's his handle online on Instagram and Twitter, you know, I think it's only right to give Tom a mention because I went to him, I'd say, only about three months ago with this idea brilliant. and a script and, and a direction and I, I kind of... Sometimes speed is the mother of invention, just it, you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Got yeah. Yeah. Thinking like, yeah. yeah, and I got I had loads of parents asking me the last day or last the last time I had a book out about maybe something for the younger mm. child, you know, and, and I think, you know, very validly and just said this time God I'll go for it, like, you know, probably pulling he was pulling his hair out at me, I'm sure that I want it so quick, but he did some job um over a few week period. But the key is Tom is like a hurling person. You know, so he knows could, a hurl from a hurley. He knows a hurl from a hurley, and I think he's more of a hurl man in Wexford now. But <laughs> yeah. he knows a hurl from a hurley. But I didn't have to go back to him too many times because yeah. he already knew. And this was even a new style for him, and he just took it on. And like I, I, I'm so happy with that. Like you know, I'm delighted to write the the longer book and for the older kid. But I'd love to be an illustrator myself. I wish I had the talent. But he just, you know, he knocked it out of the park for me, and uh, couldn't be happier. So this one, so uh, just reading that the. Uh, Description of this one. So Fitzy, Lizzie, and Bones, the characters, going to get their first hurley. So mm. they get up early, cycle to Old Neil's spooky w- workshop, meet only Old Neil, the hurley maker, and then see their first hurleys being made. But it's like um, Ollivander's wand shop in Harry Potter, where they yes. go in, the three characters yes. go in and get their yeah. mystical first wand, and well, the wand chooses them. Does the hurl choose the, well, the, the hurl? Kid? The hurl, uh, the hurley. I don't know how I'm going to call it. Sorry, hurley. But we'll go both, yeah. But it is, to, you would often hear it referred to as your wand. You know what it is? And it's such a personal thing to people. Like, it's scary. Like, I don't really like people pick mine up because I know they're probably going to insult it because everyone is so different. Like, I like a really fed or light one. Whatever it is, weekends, I, I don't know what it is, or flicking as a back man, you have to flick in and, you know, try and get the ball. And then, but other guys for a thicker handle or a, a, a more timber, heavier, heavier head on it, um, heavier boss or a flat handle or a round handle. So there's such a variation to it. Um, and it's such a personal thing to people. And, uh, you know, if you if I picked it up and I didn't like something, you know, somebody might get sour about about you not liking their hurley. So um, that is, you know, and that is the story behind it. But during it, like, uh, I want it to be a story, all right, a journey uh, for the kids in it. But also it's the practical element of showing them how a hurley is actually made. So it goes through in it that you have your different style, you know, Kilkenny might have a style, Tipperary style, Waterford style. Uh, you choose that first and then you go into, um, you know, you cut, you, you draw it out, then you cut with the bandsaw, you plane it down mm. uh, and then you finish it off. And that's kind of what I knew as growing up. Like uh, like the sound of a bandsaw to me is still so familiar. Um, and, uh, the, you know, the sprinkle of sawdust in the air. Like, they, like I... I I think it's magical enough. Like I, tr- I, f- I feel like it's magical going to the workshop. And to me, it's like if you could go to Santa's workshop. <laughs> like that's the closest thing anyone could get to Santa's workshop is going into a Hurley workshop. And it's hopefully like, the kids will, you know, see that too. It's like Di- Diagon Alley and, and Harry Potter's. The equivalent is Boris Ali and your Birth. sawdust covered factory in, in, in Tipperary. It, it, it is what it's funny one of those things like just. The, in snooker, I know, like a lot of snooker players have talked about the the cue being an extension of their arm. Yes. Nearly, like how a, can you tell the dancer from the dance? Well, like, this is know? it. And, and yes. I remember Stephen Hendry, his cue was damaged on a flight. I think he put the flight in the undercarriage, and he never played the same. Mm. There, like this was kind of towards the end of his career anyway. But he just couldn't couldn't find a cue because he had that cue for for all of his world title wins and and, mm. and that. So is it similar in, in hurling? Like you have a, a hurling if it's or hurley and. It's it's part of you. Oh, w- without doubt. Um, the odds like you couldn't use a new hurley really coming up to a match, like especially right. match. I know a lot of guys, if they have a hurley, they're only using it in the match. Like, okay. So for training, different. Now I wasn't. I had to be comfortable with mine, and you know, often had a few tears after breaking and training. But it's certainly an extension of it. It's that weight. It's it's what suits your being. Like I like I my hurleys are so light. Like the under 15s I train, pick it up, and they find it light. You know, so I'm a grown adult, um, and it has to suit your position. We hear Sean Finn talking about it recently. He's cornerback, he uses a 37 or 36. When he's centre back, he uses a 33. Wow, wow. <laughs> and, and I'd be the same. Like, uh, I'm probably 34 and a half inch hurley, um, and I'd love to go smaller. It'd be easier to manage it. But the amount of times I've just hooked somebody by that much, <laughs> I've just got that touch on the ball when, when I'm blocking somebody down. So, my position, I can't afford. All the forwards can afford to have the smaller hurlies, you know. It's tougher for your position. Yeah, but even Ollie Canning, I think it was 06, he got his, 
is hardly taking a, a press junket before the All Ireland. Like it was nearly a nationwide hunt for it, like you know. One of the greats. One of the greats, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's 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 one of those things, yeah. You you don't think about the significance and the importance of it until you hear an actual. Well, that's true. I th- I thought people would, but obviously, yeah, it looks like oh, it's like a pair of boots or it's like whatever yeah, yeah. bit of equipment, like a helmet. But no, it's um, it's certainly special, and people can have them years. I I definitely have my current Hurley since 2015 I'd say right and and hoping and praying that it doesn't break but I think the hurlies are going out last me playing hurling I was just did hey, before we let you go Paddy we should ask about uh, next season in Tipperary and how you, how you feel I mean Liam Cahill three year term in the summer to replace mm. Colin Bonner I mean Limerick are just it, it's, it's, it's hard to see the end of their dominance but I mean there are teams catching up how, how do you feel Tipperary are, are, are set in terms of closing that gap yeah I think it, it's a bit of an unknown at the minute Shane because um Probably last year, you know, it was a little lifeless. It was a little um, definitely inconsistent. Um, but I think Liam going into it, um, it, it reminds me of 2008 when Liam Sheedy went in. We we're at a little bit of a low ebb. There's not much expectation on Tipperary mm-hmm. next year. I think, you know yourself, that brings motivation. That brings a lot of energy. That brings guys that are pretty angry playing. And Liam Cal is, is quite a tough manager. And he is a great backroom team behind him as well so I could see him actually doing quite well uh, I don't think any team bar Limerick obviously are, are an insurmountable challenge mm. I think they could give a challenge to any team if they're organised if they're fit if they have the fire and drive which I think they will um, because a couple of years of underachievement I think it'll do that to you uh, certainly I remember going in I was called in the same year in, in 08 uh, on a permanent basis and the team was ready to change I mean I suppose they were looking at Kilkenny winning for a long time during that stage and now I suppose we're all looking at Limerick winning but I think it's very encouraging last year you know that Kilkenny team that drove them all the way in that final like if you put that against other Kilkenny teams before I don't think I'm disrespecting anyone to say the individuals probably aren't as good but it just showed they were able to find a way semi-final against you know um, Galway I think it was pretty close match very close, yeah. very close. Yeah. Munster final mm-hmm. gone to extra time so I think they're brilliant to actually and it shows how good they are like that Dublin football team for to be up for it over and over like they can't be as up for matches as the hungrier teams who haven't won in <laughs> yeah. a long time I think that's impossible that's myself neutraliser like exactly yeah, it just shows it, yeah. the quality that they're still able to get over the line over and over so We'd be hoping that'll change yeah. at some stage. We, uh, before I let you go, sitting in those, those seats, we had um, Jimmy Marr and uh, John O'Keefe, former teammates of Dylan Quirk, and it's yeah. been a very emotional um, year in the Tipperary Club Championship. And I know Killer Ryan McDonough's, who uh, were the team playing against Dylan Quirk's club, Clarity Ross Moore, in that match, the fateful match where he lost his life. Um, they went on to lift the Tipperary Senior Championship, first time in 37 years. It in, almost yeah. felt fateful that, that, that that's what happened. Uh, and great, great images of, of the team standing and sitting in that spot in Seba Stadium holding aloft the, the red helmet in tribute to him such an emotional time in Tipperary over the last while since that happened yeah it is It's the, I suppose the whole championship um, has had the mark of Dylan Quirk on it um, I just think the clear one lads really held themselves so well um, you know obviously you will be at the funeral and that but they were there as a team uh, they were there in huge support of Clonolty Um and to think of him straight away after the match, after 37 years, because we I know what that felt like. We were something similar mm. when we won the county final and your head is just gone, you know. But, you know, Liam O'Kelly, in fairness, as manager there, really drove the message of Dylan that they were carrying Dylan as well with him. And again, Irish, it's such a unique thing in, in the GA in Irish sport that we're so close. We're <laughs> killing each other some of the time, but mm-hmm. really at the end of the day, we're all for the one cause. And um, I thought it was very emotional. And even I know some of the Clonality guys were up in, in Clock Jordan which is in Killer One there over the last few days and a bond there as they say themselves there's a bond there that'll never ever be broken and it's just it is a lovely lovely part of, of, of our game and our culture yeah here here uh, listen Paddy you've been great with your time thanks a million for, for coming up for people you know, whether it's teachers or parents or whatever that want to get their, their their hands on a copy of the book you mentioned the website where else can people yeah well it's all, it's all shops in bookshops in Tipperary really and then I just do it online from my own website then so that worked you know, that's very, Paddy very well. Stapleton paddystapleton.ie yeah and sure look uh, it's actually out I'm meant to say that you know, this is very important it's actually out today that's out today <laughs> so, yeah exclusive now for off the ball oh, so brilliant. yeah it's out today all the bookshops in Tipperary and say get it online as well and we've we've all but we've them two and the original one and, and a couple of little 
treats on the website as well. Sorted for what I, you know, that horrible Christmas present list. What am I going to get? Now <laughs> yeah. I know, like. Well, I'm going to get Paddy. I'm going to be delighted. I'm going to get Paddy to sign these as well, just to add a little bit of value to my ones. Well, it uh, could take value, leave. I think, for <laughs> my signature. Ah, uh, not at all, not at all. Paddy, thanks a million as always not for coming nice. into us. Paddy Stapleton there, of course, Borussia and former Tipperary hurler as well.